what is the derivative of x raised to the natural log of x? How do we find the derivative of a variable raised to another variable? In this video, we're going to talk about how to do just that. So we're going to need to use logarithms, specifically a process called logarithmic differentiation. So the first thing we're going to do is set this expression equal to y. And our goal is to find the derivative of y, or dy dx, because that's going to equal the derivative of that expression. But before we take the derivative of both sides of this equation, we need to take the natural log of both sides first. The reason why we want to do that is because there is a special property of logarithms that we can employ here. For instance, the natural log of a to the second power is equal to, we can move the 2 to the front, and so it's equal to 2 ln a. So therefore, we could take this natural log and move it to the front. And so we're going to have the natural log of y is equal to ln x times ln x. Or we can write that as ln y is equal to ln x squared. Now at this point, we want to take the derivative of both sides of the equation with respect to x. So let's write dy dx, I mean d over dx, on both sides of this equation. Now what is the derivative of ln y? To differentiate a natural log expression, let's say we have a generic variable u, it's going to be the derivative of u divided by u. So if we want to find the derivative of, let's say, ln x, we take the derivative of x, which is 1, divided by whatever was here, which is x. The derivative of ln y is a little bit different. The derivative of y is 1, divided by what we see here. But because we're differentiating y with respect to x, we're going to get dy dx as well. Differentiating x with respect to x if we were to write dx over dx, that would make no sense. It would just cancel, so we can just leave it as 1 over x. So now let's go back to the problem. So the derivative of ln y, we said it's 1 over y times the dy over dx. Now what about the derivative of ln x squared? Because it's different than just ln x we need to use the chain rule. Whenever you have a composite function, you could use this process to find the derivative. So first, you want to take the derivative of the outside part of the function, that's f, while keeping the inside the same. And then you want to multiply that by the derivative of the inside function. You could think of the outside function as being u squared or x squared. So we need to deal with this exponent first. So using the power rule, we're going to move the 2 to the front. Imagine if you're taking the derivative of x squared, it will be 2x to the first power. So it's going to be 2 times the stuff on the inside raised to the first power. But keeping the inside function the same, we're just going to leave it as ln x. And then times g prime, or the derivative of the inside function, which is going to be 1 over x. So that is the derivative of ln x squared. So right now we can organize what we have. So this is equal to 2 ln x divided by x. Our next step is to multiply both sides by y. We want to get dy dx by itself on one side of the equation. So those two variables will cancel and we're going to have dy dx is equal to what we see here. But now we're not done. Remember, our original expression is equal to y. So we need to replace y with our original expression. So we have 2 ln x over x times x raised to the ln x. So this is the answer. Now sometimes it's good to see if we could simplify our answer. And there is something that we can do. Let's move this x to the bottom of that expression. 
So this is x ln x over x, or over x to the first power. When you divide by a common base, you can subtract the exponents. For instance, x to the 7 divided by x to the third is x to the 7 minus 3. So therefore, we could say that dy dx is equal to 2 ln x times, well, let's put that in parentheses, x raised to the ln x minus 1. So you just subtract those two exponents. So that's another way in which we could represent the final answer. So that's how you could find the derivative of x raised to the natural log of x. For the sake of practice, let's try another example. Go ahead and find the derivative of x raised to the e to the x. Take a minute and work on that. So let's set it equal to y first. So we have y is equal to x raised to the e to the x. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take the natural log of both sides. So ln y is equal to ln x e to the x. And then we're going to move the exponent to the front. So we have ln y is equal to e raised to the x times ln x. So now at this point, we need to take the derivative of both sides of the equation with respect to x. So we're going to add d over dx to both sides. Now we know that the derivative of ln y is 1 over y times dy dx. But what about the derivative of e to the x ln x? Well, we have the product of two factors. So we need to use the product rule. The derivative of f times g is going to be f prime, the derivative of the first part, times the second, plus the first part times the derivative of the second. So the derivative of e to the x is simply e to the x times the second part, which is just ln x, plus the first part, e to the x, times the derivative of the second part. The derivative of ln x, we know it's 1 over x. So that's what we have right now. Now, notice that we have a common factor, e to the x. So that tells us to factor out the GCF. So we're going to have 1 over y, dy over dx, and that's equal to e raised to the x times ln x plus 1 over x. Now at this point, we want to multiply both sides by y. So we're going to have dy over dx. Now let's replace y with what we have here. So I'm going to write it in front. x raised to the e to the x. So that was y. Whoops, let's do that again. ln x plus 1 over x. And then times this e to the x. So this is it. This is the answer. That is the derivative of x raised to the e to the x. Here's another example problem. What about the derivative of sine x raised to the x? Try that. So once again, we're going to set that expression equal to y. And then just like before, we're going to take the natural log of both sides of the equation. So this will allow us to take the exponent and move it to the front. So we're going to have ln y is equal to x times ln sine x. So now at this point, we could take the derivative of both sides of the equation. The derivative of ln y is going to be, as always, 1 over y times dy over dx. Here, we need to use the product rule. We have our first factor x and the second one ln sine x. 
the derivative of the first part, x, is just 1 times the second part, ln sine x, and then plus the first part, x, times the derivative of ln sine x. Now we said that the derivative of the natural log of u, it's going to be u prime over u. Well, we can see that u is sine x, so u prime is cosine x, the derivative of a sine. So u prime over u becomes cosine divided by sine, which is equal to cotangent. So that is the derivative of the natural log of sine x. It's simply cotangent x. Now our next step is to multiply both sides by y. So we're going to get dy over dx is equal to y times the natural log of sine x plus x cotangent x. And then we need to replace y with our original expression. So the final answer is going to be dy dx is equal to sine x raised to the x times the natural log of sine x plus x cotangent x. And that is the final answer. So now you know how to use logarithmic differentiation to find the derivative of functions that contain a variable raised to another variable.